Hey guys, it's Pope and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have a fun topic. We're gonna talk all about alcohol and training and how to kind of find a nice balance between those two things. I personally am a social drinker. I enjoy consuming a drink here and there, especially with my friends or my family on holidays. My favorite go-to drink is a gin and ginger ale. Might be kind of a surprising drink choice for me. I don't know but I like to find a nice balance between getting to enjoy those moments socially with friends and family, but also trying to limit the impacts on my training. So in this video, we're really gonna jump into the negative side of what alcohol does to your training, but also talk about ways that you can find that balance. Alcohol and fitness have an opposing relationship. What that means is the more alcohol is consumed, the more the fitness goes down but that can also go the other direction, which is really great. The more fitness that's consumed, usually the less alcohol is consumed. And a lot of times when it comes to rehabbing from alcoholism, that people finding joy in the gym, it helps reduce their alcohol intake. And I kind of find that in my own fitness journey as well. When I'm really serious about training for a competition, I find it a lot easier to like say no and just order like a water at dinner and then when fitness isn't really my top priority, I find myself a little more relaxed and a little more like grab a beer in the fridge on a Friday night. I think it's pretty common knowledge that alcohol is bad for our gains, but let's jump into why that is the case. First thing being is that alcohol really aids to dehydration, which is not a state that we want to be in. We're already getting dehydrated from sweating during training. We don't wanna be extra dehydrated from adding in alcohol into the mix. When you factor in that alcohol is a diuretic, it also makes it really hard to catch back up on your hydration because you're kind of fighting against that when you're trying to rehydrate after a night of drinking. Alcohol is also known to increase your water retention. So this is gonna make the scale jump up for a day or two after you've had some drinks. And that might not seem like a big deal if you have a good mental game when it comes to your weigh-ins, but take into account a sport like weightlifting where speed is a big factor. Sometimes those extra few pounds of water weight can make a big difference in how you feel in your lifts, or especially if you're a runner or like a gymnast or something where your body weight movements really rely on like speed and agility, having that extra water retention could really impact your performance. Alcohol also depletes a lot of nutrients in your system, and we definitely don't want that. And then a big one is how it impacts your sleep. Alcohol really inhibits your REM state of sleep. While you might feel like after a couple of drinks you pass out super easily, and if you deal with any kind of insomnia, that might feel awesome to go to sleep really easily, it actually is only getting you into that light stage of sleep and you're not going to get the same amount of REM sleep, if any, after you've consumed alcohol. That is a big player in your recovery. We need that deep sleep for the recovery for your next training session. Alcohol also obstructs the ideal environment needed for muscle growth. The growth hormone secretion is not going to be as high, and we need that for increase in strength and muscle mass. It's really important. And so when you consume alcohol, you're not gonna get as much of that hormone to naturally release. And so that's where the whole, it impacts your gains really comes into play. This is also another factor in your recovery. We need that hormone secretion to repair the muscle fibers after we tear them down in an intense training session. Alcohol is basically a fourth macronutrient category. It's metabolized different in the body than the other macronutrients, which are fat, protein, and carbs. Alcohol is seen in the body basically as a poison it's trying to get rid of. There's a slow process our body goes through to get rid of this poison, and it prioritizes this process over metabolizing the real food you've consumed, the fat, protein, and carbs. This means not only are the alcohol calories empty calories that cannot be converted into usable energy right away, it also means you are delaying the absorption of those other calories, your fats, carbs, and proteins. The body is going to prioritize getting that poison out of the system 
versus what it usually does by converting your food into usable energy for our workouts. So what can we do? What's the best way to find that elusive balance I was talking about? Knowing the facts and being honest with yourself, I think is step one. Because you understand the negative implications that consuming alcohol can have on your training, I think that will at least allow you to make informed choices. Sometimes it is worth it to consume alcohol and we wanna be able to do that guilt-free. My best advice is to consume alcohol in moderation. Here are some of my best tips I usually give my clients when it comes to booze. My first tip is to stay hydrated. Make sure you fuel up on water both before and after you plan on having some drinks. Number two is don't track the calories and alcohol into your macro count for the day. There are a lot of coaches out there that will tell you to use a special formula that will change your alcohol calories into a substitution for either your fats or carbs. And I really do not believe in this method. Alcohol contains seven calories per gram, but like we talked about earlier, alcohol cannot be converted into usable energy right away, like for example, carbs can right before your workout. So in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense to substitute out these calories. I prefer my clients to still eat their full macros for the day and just make a note of how many drinks they had that day. This is gonna give us data to work with when we see any weight fluctuations, we'll know why that happened. And it also gives my clients a good way to track their alcohol consumption. That way they can check themselves like on their check-ins with me and be like, oh, I was actually having a bit too many drinks this week. The majority of my clients have some sort of athleticism goal in mind, not just weight loss. I work with a lot of weightlifters, crossfitters, they wanna make strength gains and if we start substituting out their calories for their food calories, then we're gonna get into not having enough fuel for those workouts. And even when you think about just like a sedentary person who doesn't do a lot of activity during the day, their calories are already gonna be prescribed pretty low. And then if you take away calories to substitute for drinks, then you're not gonna be feeding them enough. And I just think that creates like a slippery slope for more problems. And instead, I think it's better to just make notes of when you had drinks and just preach consuming in moderation. My third tip is no sugary mixers. Go for either the straight liquor in shots or mix it in with a club soda or a diet soda, something that is either no calorie or low calorie. You can also opt for a red wine or a low calorie beer, but we wanna stay away from those super sugary, high calorie mix-ins. That's when you're really gonna start adding up the calories and that's gonna set you back on your calories in versus calories out system that is so important to weight loss or at least not gaining weight. My fourth tip is to limit it to when it's really worth it. July 4th, out on the lake with all your friends, yes, that's probably a worthy time of some indulgence. A random Tuesday when you go out to eat, maybe you should stick to water. I think it's important to pick and choose those battles with the opposing relationship of alcohol and fitness that we talked about earlier. If we are consistent with diet and training most of the time in our day-to-day -day routine, then those special times can be enjoyed without guilt and you can just have fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some helpful information out of it. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.